And a few months later, I got another letter. And this one's probably the most important in my life. It says, this is your authorization to report for training as a cadet at the United States Military Academy, West Point, New York. Yes. Now, get that appointment, for those of you who don't know, except in extremely rare cases, you have to have a nomination by a member of U.S. Congress. And when I sat before the uh, five people who told the wrong energy board, uh, one of them asked me a question I thought was politically loaded as a future officer. I was not going to answer for what he wanted to. And he was not pleased. And before the uh, interview was over, he said, basically, North, you're not getting my uh, my vote for this nomination. If you do get a nomination, you can bet your butt the only reason you're getting it is because of the recommendation made by Sergeant Jones. And you have him to thank. Thank you, Sergeant. Now, some people I talked to later, particularly those who did not go to Fulton Haskell, said, okay, yeah, but you were the cadet battalion commander. He saw motivation and potential in you. And so he spent time with you. What about the guys further down in the deck? Well, most of you, if you all were looking, you know what he did. He poured right through that deck down to the very bottom because he cared about everybody. And while we're speaking about the very bottom, example number two, my classmate in 1966, Thomas Aiken. Aiken claimed to be the worst cadet at Fulton High School. I said, absolutely no reason to uh, disagree with him. <laughs> Thomas had trouble with little things like uh, reporting for duty on time, attention to detail, uh, completing his homework, putting brass on his uniform, remembering to wear his uniform, etc. And he forced Sergeant Jones to spend a significant amount of time writing the barracks and sending out to the tennis courts for punishment tours. And Sergeant Jones could have stopped there, but he did not. Thomas Aiken got his one letter from Sergeant Jones. That started building the type of man that he might be good to be. Now, shortly after graduation, like many of you did, I'm sure, Thomas got his draft notice, draft notice. And the next thing he knew, he was walking through the rice paddies and the uh, swamps out there in the Mekong Delta of Vietnam. I've read uh, books by his <coughs> battalion commander, Colonel David Hackworth, and he speaks at least 30 times in one of those volumes about Thomas Aiken. And this is not a quote, but when I pulled out of it, nice, quiet, southern boy with a mean guitar, he demonstrated initiative, discipline, dependability, leadership, courage, loyalty to superiors, and he took care of the soldiers that he led. When I read that, there's a little mental ding-dong. That's what this guy was teaching Thomas all the time. And finally, Thomas absorbed him. The one thing that surprises me is that Thomas failed to earn one medal that should have been within his grasp. And despite of all the efforts by Sergeant Jones, Toby, his platoon sergeant, Colonel Hackworth, Thomas could never quite live up to the standards required to get the good conduct medal. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry about the length. I will say that after all, one thing I would remind you that each of us at maximum spent three years in ROTC and we had tens of experiences that uh, we could share. Sergeant Jones <coughs> thousands of them. So I would ask you sometime tonight to stop by, you know, if there's a certain event that was particularly special to you, remind Sergeant Jones. Not that he doesn't have the ability to recall, he probably dumped you just a few seconds after talking to you because he had done his job and he was moving on to the next little paper. <coughs> So, if I'm over on time, I apologize. I would ask that one time I'm please step forward.